Hello everyone, and welcome to the first episode in the Pygame RPG tutorial series. And in this series, this is what we're going to be making. As you can see, uh, we've got this little character that we can move around. Uh, we also have collisions, and we have enemies, and we can kill the enemies. And we also have a camera that follows us around, and when we touch the enemies, we die. So that's what we're going to be making in this series, and it's going to be made with Pygame and Python, so let's get right into it. First things first, we're going to want to install Pygame, and you can just do that by going into Command Prompt. And once we've got Command Prompt open, we can just type in pip install Pygame. And then it's going to say for me, requirement already satisfied because I've already installed it. Uh, but once we've got Pygame installed, we want to set up our project directory. So I've just made a folder here called Pygame RPG. And this is where all our code is going to be stored, as well as any images that we have. We're going to want to create three files. We're going to want to have main.py. Then we also have config.py. This is going to be like all the settings for our app, so any variables that we might have. And then finally, we'll have sprites.py. And sprites.py is going to be where we can store the glasses for our sprites. We also should create a folder called img, and that's where our images are going to be stored. Um, and now let's open up these in a text editor. I'm going to be using Sublime Text. You can use whatever text editor you want, but I'm just going to be using Sublime. Okay, so in our main.py file here, firstly, we're going to want to import Pygame. So import Pygame. And then we're going to also want to import everything from sprites.py and config.py. Obviously, these are empty, but we still need to import them when we write in them later. So we can just do from sprites import star, which means all, and then from config import import all. And then we're also going, going to want to import sys, which is system. Okay. Now that we've got that set up, we're going to start building up our game class. And this is going to store literally everything that our game has. It's going to bring all our code together. It's going to be like the main class, basically. So we can have a class and call it game. And we obviously have our init method. So define init. And it's going to need self. Once we've done that, we need to do pygame.init. And that is a function that is part of pygame. Basically, it just initializes Pygame so we can start using it. You need to run pygame.init whenever you create a Pygame program. Then we need to create our screen. So we need to do self.screen and we'll set it to pygame.display.set underscore mode. And here we're going to have a tuple and we'll have it to win width and win height. We don't have win width or win height defined yet. So we can do it in config.py and we'll do win underscore width equals uh, let's do 640 and win height is 480. Because we've imported everything from config, we can just use these variables right here straight out of config. So basically, pygame.display.set mode, it creates the game window for us, and with the width is uh, 640 and the height of it is 480. Then we'll do self.clock equals pygame.time.clock. And basically, what, what the pygame clock is, it allows us to set the frame rate of our game. If you don't know what frame rate is, it's how many times the game updates per second. And we can also do self.font equals pygame.font.font font, and I'm going to set it to Arial or Arial and we'll have 32. We're not actually going to be using this self.font yet. I'll explain what it does in a later video, but we'll just put it there for now because we're going to need it later. And then finally we'll do self.running equals true. And now let's create a method called new, and this is going to be called whenever we run our game. This is basically just going to set up our, all our variables for our game. We'll have define new, and it's self. We'll just comment it here saying a uh, new game starts. Self.playing equals true. These two variables here will be useful when we want to see if a player has if a player has died or not, or if the player has decided to quit the game. I'm just going to write out a few empty functions and I'll explain what they're going to do once I've done it. So we can have define update self. Then we can also have define draw self. We can have define main self. We'll also have define game over self. 
and define intro screen self. Okay, so these are all our functions that we're going to be using in our main game class. So let's just go back to our new function here. We want to set up some sprite groups in our new method. Um, basically what this is, it's a, it's a group of sprites that we can control easily. It might not make any sense at the moment, but hopefully in a bit it will make some sense. So we do self dot all sprites equals pygame dot sprite dot layered updates. And what this is, it's a object that's going to contain all our sprites in the game. So it's going to contain our character, it's going to create, it's going to contain all the walls that we have in our game. It's also going to contain all the enemies. And by having one group of sprites, it's basically going to allow us to update them all at once. Then we can have self.blocks equals pygame. I'm just going to copy and paste this. Self.blocks and self.enemies and self.attacks. So self.blocks is going to be where all our walls are stored. Um, self.enemies is going to contain all the enemies that we have in our game and self.attacks it's going to be all the attack sprites that we have, so you know, like the attack animation when we attack an enemy, basically. Uh, so these are just all empty groups at the moment that we can add our sprites into later. And then we'll do self.player. This is going to be our player object, and it's going to be a player. Uh, we don't actually have a player class defined yet, so we should go into sprites.py and start coding out the player. Uh, so we're going to need to import Pygame, of course, uh, and also from config import all. So we're going to be importing everything that's in here. And then we also need import math and import random. Uh, these, we'll need these modules later. They come pre-installed with Python, so you don't need to worry about that. Uh, and then let's make our player class. And it inherits from pygame.sprite.sprite. Basically this pygame.sprite.sprite, it's a, um, it's a class in the pygame module that basically makes it a lot easier to make um, sprites, basically. Our player is now a sprite, so we need an init method. We have self. We're also going to need game, so basically, by passing in game here, we'll be able to access all the variables here. Uh, we'll also ne need to have an x coordinate and a y coordinate to set where the player is going to appear on the screen. Uh, we'll have self.game equals game. Self dot underscore layer equals player underscore layer. So this self dot underscore layer here, um, notice back here in our sprite groups, we have this pygame dot sprite dot layered updates. By setting the layer, we can tell pygame in what layer of the screen we want the sprite to appear. We might say that the grass of the game is going to be at the bottom, then the rocks, and then the player at the top. So the player will be um, drawn above everything. This player layer, we haven't defined it yet, so let's define it in config.py. Player layer equals, let's just set it to 1 to the moment because we haven't got any, we haven't got any other layers. But for example, say we had like, ground layer, which is where our grass would go. Uh, we might want that at 1 and 2, so the ground layer gets drawn first and then the player layer gets drawn on top of that. So I'm just going to keep player layer at 1 for the moment. Um self.groups equals self.game.all sprites. Okay, self.groups. By setting the self.groups, we're basically adding in the player to the all sprites group. And we're able to access the all sprites group because we're going to pass in the game as an object. And then we'll do pygame.sprite.sprite.init. And we need to pass in self as well as self.groups. And this is just going to call the init method for the um, inherited class. And by passing in the groups, we're adding the player to the all sprites group. Now we can do self.x equals x. And then we'll multiply that by tile size. As you saw earlier, it's a tile based game. So the tile size of every tile in this game is going to be 32 by 32. So this player right here is 32 pixels by 32 pixels and that enemy is 32 pixels by 32 pixels. So we're going to need to define tile size in config.py, and I'll just do it here, tile size equals 32. We're setting self.x to the x that we've passed in here, 
times the tile size. Self.y equals y times tile size. And self.width equals tile size. So the width is going to be uh, 32 and the height is also going to be 32. Now we need to set the image of the um, player class. And for the moment, it's just going to be a rectangle. So we can do equals pygame.surface. And then we pass in a list here and we'll have self.width and self.height. So by creating a surface here, we're basically creating a rectangle, which is 32 pixels long and 32 pixels tall. And then we're setting that rectangle as the sprite image. So basically our sprite is going to be a rectangle, which is 32 pixels wide and 32 pixels tall. And then we're going to fill the image with a color with the color red. So now we'll get a red rectangle as our sprite image. And we can just set the red to 25500. If you don't understand what this means, this is RGB. I'll summarize it quickly. But basically, this is how many um what amount of red we're going to have in the color. This is how much green we're going to have, and this is going to be how much blue we're going to have. And it's on a scale of 0 to 255. So we're going to have the maximum amount of red we can have. We're going to have no green, and we're going to have no blue. And then we're going to set the self.rect. And basically, every sprite in Pygame has an image, and it also has a rect. So the image is what it looks like, but the rect is like where it's positioned, and how big it is, basically. This is what it looks like, and this is the rectangle like like the hitbox basically so we can do self.image.get rect by doing self.image.get rect uh, we're basically just setting the self.rect to the same size as the image so the hitbox and the image of the player are the same and then self.rect.x equals self.x and self.rect.y equals self.y we're going to tell pygame the coordinates of our rectangle and also every pygame sprite also has to have a method called update. It's going to need self, and we'll just pass. So that's it for the player class. We can leave this now, and we can return back here. What parameters did the player class have? It had self, we can just ignore that. It had the game object, and it had some coordinates. So to pass the game object, we can literally just type in self, because we're passing in this class of game, which is self. We can have it as one and two. Its coordinates is going to be one on the x-axis and two on the y-axis. But because we're multiplying it by tile size, it's going to be positioned 32 pixels on the x-axis and 64 pixels on the y-axis. So that's our player object created there. And we also need a events method. I forgot to add this in earlier. So now how about we go into our main method, which is going to be running constantly while we're playing our game. So in the main method, we'll just comment this game loop. So every game needs a game loop. So we can have while while self.playing. So while self.playing equals true, we want to call the method self.events. We want to call self.update. And we also want to call self.draw. And then if self.playing is ever false, if we ever stop playing, then we're also going to sell, set self.running to false as well. So our game is going to have three parts to the main method. It's going to have the events method, it's going to have the update method, and it's going to have a draw method. The events method is going to contain everything like our key press events, so when we um, type on the keyboard or whatever. Update, basically going to update the game to make sure that it isn't just a static image. And then draw is going to display all the sprites onto our screen. So going up to events, so I'll just comment this game loop events. So we can do for event in pygame.event.get. So it's a for loop, and pygame.event.get is going to get every single event that happens in pygame. And we're going to iterate over that list. And then if event.type equals pygame.quit, self.playing is going to be false, and self.running is also going to be false. So basically, pygame.quit the pygame quit method is when we press the close button. So it's constantly checking to see if we've pressed this button or not. So if if the event type was a quit event, once we press that, we stop playing and we stop running. 
Okay, so that's it for the events method now. For the update method, uh, game loop updates self dot all sprites dot update. So self dot all sprites is that sprite group that we had here, this layered updates. And this layered updates object, it contains a method called update. And basically by calling self dot all sprites dot update, it's going to find the update method in every single sprite that's in that group and it's going to run this method. So self.allsprites.update is going to look in this group and go through every single sprite in this group and it's going to call the update method in that sprite, which is this down here. And now onto the draw method. So firstly, we're going to just want to fill the screen with black. So self.screen, uh, self.screen is our screen that we've defined up here with win width and win height. Uh, self.screen.fill and we can fill it with black. So it'll just be a black window at the moment. But then we can do self.allsprites.draw self.screen. And what this does is we're referring to this all sprites sprite group again. And it's going to call the draw method. And what this draw method does, it looks through every single sprite in the all sprites group. And in our case, it's just this one player. It finds the image and it finds the rectangle and it draws that onto our window. So once we've drawn all our sprites, um, we're going to want to do self.clock.tick, self.clock.tick. And if you remember earlier, I said self.clock is going to allow us to set our frame rate. So how many times the screen updates. And then here we can just pass in FPS and here I'll set a variable called FPS and set it to 60. That's 70, 60. So we're going to update the screen 60 times per second with this clock.tick method. And then finally, pygame.display.update. And this pygame.display.update, it will literally just update the screen. And then game over, we can deal with this later in a different video. So that's it for our game class. Uh, now we actually need to convert this class into an object. So we can say g equals game, and it doesn't have any parameters. And then we can do g.intro screen. So as soon as we run this file, it's going to create the game object and it's going to run the intro screen method. But because the intro screen doesn't have anything in it, it's just going to skip over it. And then it's going to run the g.new method. So g.new, if you remember, it's going to set self.playing to true. It's going to create all the sprite groups and it's going to create our player object. So this is going to be called whenever we start our game. And then while g.running, while this self.running is true, what we want to do is we want to do g.main, and g.main has got its own loop inside of that, and while, while, it, while we're playing the game, we want to run the events method, the update method, the draw method, and once this loop stops, we'll set self.running for false, then we'll break out of this loop, and then we can call the method pygame.quit, so we'll quit out of our game and we can type in sys.exit and we'll also quit the Python program. And just in here we can do the g.game over method. Uh, which doesn't have anything in it, uh, but we'll just put it there because we're going to need it eventually. So that's pretty much it for our code and now let's run it. Uh, basically here you'll need to find your own font file. I forgot to put it in, so for now we can actually just delete this. Um, we're going to need it later, but we can always add it in later. Uh, run it. Black is not defined, and that is because I forgot to set the black color in the config. So we can have black equals zero, zero, zero. So we're not going to have any red, we're not going to have any um, green, and we're not going to have any blue. So it's just going to be black. And if we run it, we get our rectangle, which is 32 pixels by 32 pixels. And this is updating 60 times per second. You can't see because there's not any movement but it's also uh, 32 pixels along on the x-axis and 64 pixels down on the y-axis. So that's it for today. And in the next episode, we're going to start adding some movement to our rectangle. So we're not just looking at a black screen and a red rectangle. If you have any questions or comments about Pygame, leave them in the comment section below. I will get back to you. Otherwise, that's it from me. Cheers and goodbye.